Hello, friends. This is the art class demonstration uh, for how to uh, make some uh, Klaus Oldenburg inspired uh, sculptures out of model magic. And I'm going to demonstrate a few different um, food items that you might want to make, but maybe you were inspired um, with, with some other things that you saw in that uh, short uh, video that we watched of uh, Klaus Oldenburg's uh, work at the store in New York City. So let's go ahead and um, switch to my desktop camera here. I've got all of my supplies. Um, this is definitely uh, more supplies than I may need, but all of the things you may need for today, well, certainly you're going to need your model magic. All right, um, sketchbook or um, any sheet of uh, copy paper like so. Uh, would do, um, for example, if you were making some food, you want to make it on a plate, right? You'd uh, draw a circle on your paper here and cut that out, and that can be your plate. You could even decorate the plate, um, uh, stuff like that. So uh, markers, colored pencils, um, paint. Uh, paint's going to be handy uh, when you are finished with your sculpture uh, for giving it some color, right? And um, scissors as well. I may come in handy. And of course, your water, your small container of water, if you're going to, uh, when you get to the painting uh, step of the project. So I'm going to move everything aside. I'm just starting with my model magic here. And I will show you how to do uh, a few things in this video. You can jump right ahead in the video on your own if you would like to see the demonstration of something uh, specific. Uh, but I'm going to start with a, a cookie, and I will also show you how to make an ice cream sundae, a pizza, a taco, and a sushi. So here we go. Let's get started. And I'm going to uh, make sure my focus is pretty good. All right. So start with opening your model magic, of course. And you might find it helpful. I don't know if uh, the model magic sticks to your desktops your tabletops at all, but um, it sticks to mine because I have paper on my desktop here. So I work on uh, a plastic bag and it doesn't stick to that. So very handy, your art supply bags are plastic bags. So you could use that underneath your workspace as well. So um, I'm not even gonna make my cookie example use the entire piece here. And of course you could like, especially if you made a plate Right, and you wanted to have a few different food items on that plate, you certainly could. Um, and then you wouldn't want to use up your entire piece of bottle magic on, on a one piece of food then. So I'm just going to use half uh, to demonstrate my cookie here. And I will rip that half in half to show you, uh, well, I'll do the, the main part of the cookie which I'm going to start by rolling into a ball, which you can do by just doing circles between your hands like this, just like pedaling a bike, uh, or you could do it right on your tabletop and go in circles like so, till you feel it turning into a ball. And once you've got a nice round sphere with that nice ball shape, you can just press that down a little flatter and it'll make a nice round shape for your cookie okay and of course you could uh you can make a cookie in any shape you want with your scissors as well right uh so there we go uh i've got my main part of my cookie and now my cookie is going to be all just uh plain white now because i'm going to paint everything later uh just like uh klaus oldenberg did with his examples that we saw after making the sculptures and my leftover piece here i ripped in half and one half I'm just flattening out to make into a, a, a flat layer of frosting. So I'm gonna try to just kind of make it, I wanna make it a little smaller than my actual cookie. So some of the cookie will show, um, but I'm just making it into like a kind of a, a frosting shape, almost like a splatter shape here. There you go, you see how that is right there. And I can just lay that right over the top of my cookie. And if it's larger than you want, you can always 
change the shape of it once it's on there. But remember, Model Magic really loves to stick to itself. There we go. And um, that could, it, my, my cookie could be as simple as that. And I could paint it. I've got a finished example of a cookie I had already made that you can see here. I've got, it's a super fancy cookie with whipped cream and a cherry on top and uh, sprinkles on it. All right, it's got pink frosting, uh, brown cookie base, red cherry, and of course I left the whipped cream, just plain white. All right, so uh, if you'd want to do it just like that, I'll show you how you could do uh, whipped cream and a cherry. So my last piece that I've got left here, I'm going to rip off a small piece to put aside that I'll make a cherry out of later. Now to make the whipped cream, go back and forth to make a long kind of snake shape. There you go. And if you want to make it pointy at the ends, just take one finger and go back and forth. And there you go. You make it a little more pointy, like whipped cream coming out of a can. There we go. Nice and pointy there. And then I could put that right on top of my cookie in a swirly shape, just like you might do with whipped cream spraying out of a can. I even put my little point sticking up there, as you can see. And it's kind of hard to see in my with my lighting here. Maybe if I turn one of these lights off, it'll show up a little better. Eh, it doesn't look so much, but and everything's white, which makes it hard to uh, really show off the details there. But um, you'll be able to see what you're doing much better in front of you than what you can see on my camera. To make a cherry, of course, just roll that into a ball. And there we go. And I could put that right on top of my whipped cream. And ta-da, I could then be ready to paint this cookie, this super extremely fancy cookie. So there we go. There is a uh, cookie, just like this one here that has color. All right. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate to you how you could do ice cream. So. I'll just do, uh, you could do as many scoops in your ice cream sundae. Um, if you're making an ice cream sundae, you could do a banana split, right? And roll out um, some skinny pieces. I guess I'll demonstrate a banana split here. And um, well, this is gonna be a very tiny uh, banana split. If I just have one piece, I'll save that piece for later. Get myself a new piece of model magic to demonstrate my banana split. Can be a little bigger. It's got a lot of parts. I'm going to rip off two pieces that are kind of big, about the same size as each other. That'll be my bananas. There we go. And then I will, uh, I'll just do one scoop of ice cream. Now yeah, we'll do two scoops. There, one, one, and then I'm going to have. I'm going to leave uh, a little bit. It's all about ripping out your pieces, uh, deciding how many pieces your, your food um, is going to be made out of, right? And then making sure you set those aside. So that'll be my whipped cream. That'll be my cherry. And these two will be my scoops. And I'll start with my banana. All right, banana, right? Back and forth. Make it kind of long, make it a little narrower. On the side, you just use your finger to narrow it. All right, a lot of different ways you could do this. And then just curve it. And there we go. Nice banana shape. And I could do that the same with this piece and make it a little narrower on the edges. And there you go. Curve that one. Check it out. Two bananas. Now, Ice cream scoops, as simple as just making a ball. All right, it's just like a bigger than the cherry. So there we go. I've got one scoop. And there are many different uh, ways to make anything, my friends. These are This is just one way that I am demonstrating to make each of these things. And like I said, you might want to make uh, some food that I'm not even demonstrating, like, uh, like a chicken leg or something. All right, so I'm going to... Uh, that my scoops will actually help hold my banana 
my bananas together and make them stand up because of how nice and sticky uh, model magic is. I can put two scoops right on top of those bananas. There we go. So there you see, um, oh, I don't know how this happened. Okay. There you see my two scoops on top of my two bananas, like uh, it's like a, a sleigh kind of, um, or a boat. And then I could make my whipped cream by just, just like I did with the cookie, make it long and skinny, make it nice and pointy at the ends for my whipped cream. And I could pile that on top in a swirly kind of, squirting out of the can, whipped cream shape there, and then make a little tiny circle, little sphere here for my cherry. And boom, there we go. Hard to, hard to really see all of the details. Sorry, my friends. Um, if this were painted, it would show up much better. But I've got all the parts of a banana split. I'd probably want to put that on a plate. A little tricky to make a bowl out of paper. You could try and see if you can figure out a way, but I would just put it on a plate. That'll be fine. And now let's show you how to do pizza. All right, pizza is pretty simple. First, I'm just going to, uh, well, it depends if you want to make a whole round pizza or a triangular slice. I'm going to make a triangular slice here. So I'm just going to start, I, I kind of made like a ball shape and I'm just going to pinch one end. All right, that'll make that pointy. And then I can just start flattening it. And just bit by bit. And of course you could also do this by um, flattening out all of your model magic and cutting a triangle out of it. And then you could, the scraps you could use for toppings on your pizza. So I'm going to do, this is a pretty small piece of pizza. And that's all right. It's kind of, we're kind of doing the opposite of how often uh, Klaus Oldenburg made supersized versions of things. We're making um, miniature versions of things. So I take my scissors and you can see how scissors is a very handy tool that works well with model magic. And I could even roll up the, end of the crust a little bit, give that pizza kind of a, looks like it's got a puffy crust where you hold on to it, kind of comes up a little bit, maybe like a deep dish pizza or something like that. And then I could just with my leftover piece here, I could, I could even make a, a flat piece to be my cheese if I wanted my cheese to be like a separate piece and give it some texture. <laughs> Texture, another um, handy thing. So you could use your pencil, right? If I want to make my, let's put little dots in my pizza crust to give it kind of a grainy bread texture. So it'll, it'll uh, look different, like it's made out of different stuff than the rest of my pizza. So you can see, I hope the dots show up. Yeah, you can kind of see them in there. And it's just like poking tiny little dots in there. And I'll put some, some cheese on there. And uh, just like all those textures that we drew, right, you could even make little drippy parts if you want. Like, look at this, I'm going to have some cheese dripping off the side of my slice of pizza. I think that might look cool. And I can just droop that down and make that drip down there. This would look great on a plate. Look at that, it looks like melted cheese dripping off the pizza there. And then I could take more pieces of model magic. I could make sausage, right? Just like little, little chunks that you could stick to your pizza. And of course, when you paint this, it's gonna be much easier to tell the difference between all of your little food items there. If you wanna make pepperoni, it's just like making a, a ball 
and then you flatten the ball and it's a round disc like so and i could put that on my pizza as well i could and whatever toppings you want on your pizza you could do that and see if it it shows up my goodness this does not show up super good on my camera um, let me turn off another light and see if that helps or lower my exposure maybe that'll help well you can see that there's textures on there right so these are like real textures not the implied textures like when we were drawing but there we go there's my pizza now um let's demonstrate a taco i'm going to do a, a soft shell taco all right nice soft corn tortilla or maybe you prefer flour um however you like your tacos however you want to make your taco here i uh, make a ball first and then i'm going to smush it nice and flat i want a nice flat tortilla spread that out a bit And I could give I could give that texture as well with little 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 dots and such in my tortilla if I want. Give it a, a grainy kind of look like it was made with a real cornmeal or something. Um, some real masa flour. Here we go. All right, check it out. Um, There. You can't really, there you can kind of see the dots. All right, so then I could um, fill that with toppings, right? Uh, which is gonna be very similar to, uh, it's, I mean, it's just like uh, cooking, my friends are putting a taco together, really. You just make everything the shape of the ingredients you want in there. So I could make little chunks uh, that could be like, uh, meat or something, maybe some ground beef or some chorizo or something in there, or you could you could make it into more like strips like this, and and say that's like chicken strips in there maybe, and of course you could you could also make those little um, strips as cheese just make a bunch of little pieces of cheese to put on your taco and there we go and then i could i could uh, i could add tomatoes onions whatever i like but you can kind of see my um taco filling kind of laid in there inside the taco and after I paint it I could even fold it up a little bit right and then it'll dry in the shape that I wanted I could make a plate of tacos I could do like three tacos on a plate nice nice all right so there we go that's my taco I'll put that aside and let's do uh let's do sushi next all right so sushi there's uh, many different ways you could do it of course um, I'm going to, I'm going to make a bigger piece. So hopefully this shows up a little bit better, but I'm just going to start with making a nice long strip. This will be my, my seaweed on the outside. It'll make it nice and long. And then I'm going to flatten that. There we go. See the seaweed on sushi. If any, if I've got any sushi fans out there, right, it's pretty thin. So I'm going to make this pretty thin. And then if I want to really straighten the edges, of course, that's where my scissors could be very handy. And just snip off 
the parts you don't want. You can use those to make more food later. And I'm gonna cut, you could even cut that nice and straight if you like. Look at that. I've got a nice piece of seaweed to wrap my sushi in. And then um, I could do, it depends how, to, to do your rice, you could just make a bunch of little pieces of rice, right? Like this and fill up uh, your sushi that way. It's kind of cool and uh or you could just after you roll up your sushi piece you could just give it the texture um on the rice that shows all right many different ways to do it i'm going to make all my individual pieces of rice i think and this uh could take a while but i just start laying my rice in the middle of my sushi, just like I'm making real sushi. All those little grains of rice. Let's go all the way up and down the strip here. And then on one end over the top of that, I could um, just make a, a little piece of uh, whatever you like in your sushi. Maybe you like uh, little chunk of avocado, right? Um, a little um, imitation crab, a little piece of raw fish. I like, uh, well, I like all kinds of sushi. Eel, um, tuna, octopus, um, salmon. Uh, it's, I pretty much eat all of it, my friends. There's not really any foods out there that Mr. Miller does not love. So uh, there you go. But um, once you would cover this all up with your rice, you would add that, that little topping in the middle. And I think maybe I'll just, just to make my demonstration shorter, I may make this a very, um, I may cut my strip of sushi shorter. You might, you might decide similar things while you're making yours because you might be like, you know, I could make like two pieces of sushi out of that. Um, and of course, these are just a, a few things I'm demonstrating, my friends. There are, you are all familiar with many different kinds of food. You could make uh, your foods uh, be kind of anything um, or uh, maybe someone's going to make a hat or something instead. Or, um, or anything, anything else uh, that maybe you were inspired from the video or just an idea you had on your own that wasn't even um, in the video. Um, Pop art uses um, kind of anything from everyday life as subject matter uh, for, for artwork, okay? So any everyday kind of thing, all right, you could even you could make like a milk carton. You could make um, my goodness, so many different things. The possibilities are endless. You could even make whatever um, they are serving for lunch today at school. You could make a version of that uh, out of model magic today. So here we go. I'll I'll stop right there with my rice, and now I'm going to say this is just a chunk of raw tuna right in the middle there. And then I'm gonna roll it up. And then I'll cut off the part I don't need. And look at that, my friends, nice piece of sushi. You can see the rice in there and uh, my chunk of raw tuna. So there you go. I showed you how to make a cookie, uh, a banana split, pizza, a taco, and sushi. So now real quickly, I will demonstrate to you um, how to mix brown. And uh, some of you may um, 
already remember how to do this. If you remember, if you've been in second grade and you remember um, when we did that in art class here at Horace Mann, but I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna pull out a, an example of a color wheel here. Now, good tip for making browns, complementary colors, right? The colors that are straight across from each other on the color wheel, those are going to be some excellent main ingredients for making your brown. So like blue and orange, um, red and green, um, purple and yellow. Can all give you different versions of like brownish colors. I really like how um, the brown that purple and yellow uh, make. I've had luck with that. So you've got your paint palette here, right? That has white paint, black paint, and your primary colors. Um, that's all you need, my friends, for uh, making brown. So let me, uh, where did I put my paintbrush? Here, I've got a different paintbrush right here. I'll use this. Oof, good thing there's always something laying around my desk. So to make brown, I'm going to refer to my color wheel here. I'm going to do, I'll start with purple and yellow. And then I can always adjust that. I can add little bits of white, little bits of black, all kinds of different ways. But I know to, to make purple first, I need to get some red and some blue. And it takes a while adding uh, some, adding the water to the paint to really bring it back to life. Let's take some patience. But you, you also, you do not want to throw away your paint palette. Um, at the end of this lesson, this paint palette will come in handy. There's enough paint on here to last for a few projects and you won't get another paint palette. So um, make sure when you change colors to wash your brush every time you switch to a new color um, so that you keep your yellow and your blue and your red nice and not all messed up uh, with paint mixing right on the puddles of color. Do your paint mixing on another part of the plate or a piece of scrap paper. That's what I recommend. So there we go, rinse off my brush, go into my blue now. Bring some blue back to life so I can make a nice purple. And there really are um, just endless recipes for how to mix up browns. As many recipes for browns as there are beautiful, um, rich varieties of brown in the world. So uh, you, can experiment, come up with your own secret recipe for your own version of brown. I have, uh, nope, I did not rinse off my brush very well there. I got my yellow a little bit dirty. Unfortunately, um, not too dirty, but I'm gonna make sure, I'm just gonna stay in that dirty part then so I, I don't cover my entire yellow with this little bit of uh, blue I accidentally mixed in there. All right, so, and I need a lot of yellow. I'm gonna need more yellow than that bit of red and that bit of blue that I have because I want it to be like half yellow, half purple. And uh, there are recipes for brown in the slides for our lesson this week, um, multiple recipes in there if you want, but you can also experiment and come up with your own, of course. I'm just gonna show you this one here um, in the video. Otherwise the video, I could make an hour long video of just making brown. And uh, that'd be a little bit much to uh, have to watch. There we go. So I'll mix those together. And if you need to adjust your color, like I'm like, eh, I think I want more yellow in here. 
or maybe I'm going to put a little more red in there. Yeah, do some more red. Um, just experiment. And you will eventually get, come up with something that I think you'll be pleased with. There we go, I added some red to there. I think that was definitely an ingredient I needed more of. All right, and now it's maybe a little too much red. So I'm gonna add some yellow to that just a little bit. There we go, okay. And it's getting there, my friends, getting a nice brown together and see you could even add a bit of white. All right, I'm trying not to go right in the middle of my white so that I don't get all my white dirty here. And look at that. All right, you can really see a nice brown in there. And this is a, could be a good brown. This is kind of a light brown. This could be a good brown for my cookie or my pizza crust. All right, I might want to get a, a darker brown if I want to make chocolate sauce on my uh, um, ice cream sundae, right? Um, so many different ideas. I could even make little uh, toasty uh, marks on my tortilla. I can pretend it, if it was like a flour tortilla, how they're like white, but uh, when they... And they uh, toast them up, there be little burn marks on them. Um, so, so many different ways. All right, you get the idea here. I could even add a little bit of black if I want. Black's a very powerful color though. So beware about adding uh, a lot of it to your color because you can't really undo it. Um, so I, I like to add black little bits at a time there. But there we go, that's a nice, I got some nice varieties of brown right in there. I got some reddish browns. Um, this is more of a, a sandy brown. I could do caramel browns, um, deep chocolatey browns. So just wanted to show you a demonstration of how to make at least one kind of brown there. Remember, complementary colors. Looks the colors straight across from each other on the uh, color wheel. So like red and green, purple and yellow, blue and orange are good, good places to start uh, with making your browns. All right, so remember what I'll be looking for um, in your project is of course your sculpture of whatever food uh, you have done. And here I'll do a little, I'll demonstrate. I'm gonna start doing my pizza. You're gonna need your sculpture of your food uh, you, you may want to uh, put that on a plate, especially if you've got multiple foods, um, but it's also going to be handy uh, if you've got a plate because you can write your name on the bottom of a plate. And here we go. Oh, I forgot to <laughs> mix that in to here. And I can just paint right on there. Now remember your um, model magic is still soft. So be gentle when you're holding it so you don't smush it. Um, and there we go. You could also paint on details on your plate. Like if you've ever seen like uh, fancy restaurants and stuff where they uh, drizzle on, uh, drizzle a little sauce on the side of uh, the, the main dish to kind of uh, make it look extra fancy, give it a little, little accent. Um, and there are some pictures of that uh, in the slideshow as well. But here you go, you can see I'm painting my crust and I could go right on the side, paint the side of the crust too. I want, a, I want my uh, illusion to work, but I'm try I don't wanna paint over that cheese. I'm gonna paint that cheese a different color, maybe, Maybe some yellow or some, uh, it could even just be white. Um, depends on what color you want your cheese to be. And then I can make my uh, toppings another color, of course, my sauce. All right, get in there, add some sauce around the edge. Just remember to uh, 
rinse your brush every time you switch colors and uh, you don't want to throw away your paint palette. You want to save as much of this paint on there as you can for uh, future um, painting projects. There we go, add a little bit more of my sauce on there. All right, so I've got sauce around my pizza and you get the idea. I could keep painting any one of these food things that I've made. So I think that's uh, pretty good for our demonstration. When you have your assignment finished, um, take a photo that shows all of its parts and you turn that in uh, to you know, our assignment post on Schoology this week. So I'm going to switch back to my face camera here. And all right, friends, good luck, chef artists. Oh yeah, I cannot wait to see your food creations or whatever you're making.